Hey everyone, we're going to get technical today and I'm going to introduce you to a piece of software called Sketch for Mac and give you some pointers for using it to design websites. I switched from designing websites in Photoshop to using Sketch a few years ago now and I was very hesitant to at first. I knew what I was doing in Photoshop so I didn't want to interrupt my workflow and my process to learn something new, it just felt like a waste of time but I also didn't want to get left behind. Everyone in the industry seemed to be talking about Sketch and all the rest of my team was using it so I decided that it was worth putting in the time to get to know it and honestly I'm so glad that I did. It's just improved my workflow so much, I find it much faster to explore and iterate on designs and also exporting assets is a breeze with Sketch. So if you're in a similar position to what I was in, I highly recommend you download the free trial and check it out. When I first started using Sketch I had a workmate walk me through the basics and show me around a bit and it really helped with the learning curve so I'm going to pass on that favour today and show you around Sketch. So this here is Sketch. On your left you've got your layer panel, this in the middle is your canvas, on the right is the details panel, and then up the top is the toolbar. Now yours won't look like this when you first download Sketch because it's customizable. You can set yours up like mine if you want, but over time you'll work out the best way for you. To do that you just right click and go into customize toolbar and you can rearrange all these things and put them wherever you want. The first thing I do when I'm getting started making a website is add an artboard. So come up the top here and add an artboard. You'll see at the side that it recommends a few common sizes to start with for web design which is really useful so I'm just going to select desktop. A feature that I really like about Sketch is the layout tool so to turn that on click Control L. You'll see this pops up. Head up to view and go to your layout settings. For the websites that I design I generally use a bootstrap grid and I'll leave a link down below to more information about that if you haven't heard of that before. But that involves 12 columns and a gutter width of 20 pixels so as you can see I just have sketch set up to mimic that and it's just a really easy way to create a grid to stick to for your design. A really useful thing to do with web design if you want to make yourself think about designing for mobile while you're still also designing for the desktop is to add another artboard and we'll just select iPhone 6 and add that next to your desktop design and you can sort of work on them both in tandem. It works pretty well and it helps you to think about the responsive layout as you're doing everything else. You'll see in the top left here there's a thing called pages and basically this means not only you can have different artboards but you can have different well pages within your sketch file so you can add a different one over here. So if you're just working on a whole website for example and you want to keep the different pages of the website on separate sections to you know work on and develop you can do this and just rename like this one home and this one about for example. I tend to often have one page that is my wireframes and then move on to another page for my like high fidelity designs. Works quite well to keep them separate but they're also in the same file so it's easy to reference them. So to actually get into designing my site or laying out a wireframe, whatever is the first step that you're doing in Sketch, this works pretty much the same as you would in Photoshop or wherever else you design websites currently. You're going to add shapes and text and you know style them all up to make it look like the design that you want. So I have my shapes and my text tools up here in the toolbar in one group for that reason. So I'm going to start with a rectangle and just drag it out as if I'm making a header. Sketch is really handy, see how it shows you the size of the box that you're drawing as you're drawing it and you can also just come into this details panel here and easily fine tune everything to be exactly how you want. You'll notice that this details panel changes depending on what element you've selected. You see when I'm in a shape it shows me the fill and the borders and the opacity that sort of stuff. And then when I click on a piece of text it shows me the typeface and font size options. It's very handy and it means that you're always going to look over to this side here when you're wanting to fine tune the details of the thing you've just drawn. Something I'm going to point out because I struggled with it at first with Sketch and it was actually, it seemed silly but it was one of the hardest things for me to get used to and that was the fact that clicking V which in Adobe software gives you just you know the pointer cursor key here it gives you the vector tool so if you click V and then start clicking on things trying to move them around you're actually going to start drawing a shape accidentally. In Sketch the pointer is just when you've got no tools selected so to get that you just hit escape from whatever you're in and you'll get your pointer back. One of the great things about Sketch is that there's a whole community behind it who like to build things that work in with Sketch and make it even more awesome than it already is on its own. This happens with Photoshop and other things as well but with Sketch it's really easy. There's an app called Sketch Toolbox that you can download and it makes it really easy to search for lots of plugins. 
One that I would really recommend is called Content Generator and let me show you what it does. So say for example I decided I wanted to have this here be a photo of someone. Just go up to my Content Generator plugin, go to Persona, Photos and make it a female. And then it's going to fill the circle with a female. It can also do text, so say if I draw a text box here and then click on it. Let's not make that blue, let's make that black. And then I go to generate text, dummy text, Laura Mipson. It's going to fill that in there. Don't actually want that much, so I'm just going to delete some here. This plugin really comes in handy when you're just quickly working or mocking up a site and you just want to shove some filler photos in to get a general sense of how it would work with content in it before you've got the real stuff. Something else that's really handy with Sketch is the way that it hints to you when aligning things. So say I wanted to put a headline in here above these two things, get some text, I'm just going to type headline, make that a bigger. I want to make this centered so if I drag it over it's going to show me where the center is but also it could just be sitting there and I click this tool up in the right and it pops it in the middle for me. All these little things are what really come together to help speed up the process in Sketch and when you get used to using them they really really do help with your workflow. There's something else interesting about Sketch is that it's a mix of vector and bitmap software so Illustrator for example is vector software whatever you draw in Illustrator can be expanded up and scaled infinitely and it's still going to look nice and sharp. Photoshop is has vector stuff as well but it's mostly bitmap software so it's about photos which are things that you obviously can't scale up to however big you want eventually they are going to look pixelated. With Sketch you have the option to look at your design in either view in vector or bitmap. So right now I'm looking at my design in vector view and if I draw a circle for example say we wanted a little icon above our headline here just bring him down When I zoom in, and if I turn off my layout, remember using Control L, see my circle is still looking nice and sharp because I'm in vector view. But if I come up to view and click show pixels, you're able to start seeing the pixel grid. And then you can just check that the things that you are drawing align to the pixel grid nicely and look nice and sharp. This is really useful when you're drawing icons because it means you can happily draw them really close up and see all the details in this vector view. But then you can turn on show pixels and check that your design is aligning to the grid nicely. I might do a video in the future about making pixel perfect icons. Let me know if you'd be interested in that down below in the comments. And remember, like I said at the start, all the way you're doing this, you can also be thinking about your mobile layout and dragging things over to this canvas at the side, thinking about what things might look like on a mobile device instead of on a laptop. Right, so at the start I said that exporting assets was awesome in Sketch, and now I'm going to show you why. So, say I'm finished with this design, pretend there's a lot more here than there actually is, and I'm ready to show someone. I click on the artboard, so just by clicking on the name or by clicking on it over here in the layer panel. Then I come down to make exportable. I want to export it as a JPEG, and see here you can choose the resolution as well, so this is really handy for exporting assets for being seen on retina screens. For now I'm just going to export the desktop. But you can also come in and select individual elements. So say this circle here was an icon and I want to export it to be used as an SVG, for example. I can change that in this drop down. And then if I also want to export it as a PNG at the same time, I can do that. Let's do a 1x and a 2x, how about? And this, this suffix thing here is going to be what amends to the file name. And the file name is going to be whatever your layer is called. So this is not a great file name, let's just change that to be called icon, hit export, then in my folder I can see I've got the 1x, I've got the 2x, and I've got the SVG, all exported for me with one click which is amazing. So that's a fairly fast walkthrough of the basics of Sketch and a few things that should hopefully help you get up and running with it and working with it as part of your web design process. As with learning anything new, you do need to give it a bit of time to build up your knowledge and the speed and feeling comfortable with the software until you're at a point where 
you can really run with it but trust me it is worth putting in the time there's many little things like I said the keyboard shortcuts for example are quite different to the Adobe suite and I found that really frustrating at first but you do get used to it I promise and if you stick with it I think that it will really help your workflow as well. If you've got any questions for me or if there's anything in this video you didn't quite understand please feel free to leave them down below in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter I'd love to help you out. I have a few more videos about web design I did one showing you my wireframing process another about web design resources that I think you'll like they'll be linked down below as well so check them out download the sketch trial and get playing around with it and I wish you good luck. Thank you for watching, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe if you are new to my channel and I will see you next week. Bye!